Hello, this is Keith Stevens with International Coding, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to mix a Pantone color using our Ultramix 7500 color concentrate series. The color we are going to mix today is Pantone 185C, and it's a coated color that means it's going to be a, have a glossy appearance. I chose this color because it is a very popular red that many printers are using on a daily basis. But I do want to preface that this Pantone formula calls for six of the ingredients. And the majority of our Pantone formulas call for around four or so. All our formulas are located online and can be accessed using iccinc.com. You click on the calculator Ultramix software and you'll get, be able to get all our formulas there. Choose the ink series from the drop down menu on top. In this case, it'll be the 7500 color concentrate line. Then choose the Pantone color that you want from the drop-down menu. In this example, it is going to be the 185C. Next, pick the amount of ink you would like to mix. The green boxes have some pre-weighted amounts already listed, but you can also put in your own value. In this example, we're going to mix 200 grams of ink. As you can see, the website automatically calculates the amount by percentage weight and the grams of the various ink colors that you will need to make this red. So here's what you need to mix the color. A good scale that is accurate to the tenth of a gram, an empty container for mixing, a spatula, uh, something to wipe off the spatula with, a rag, and of course the Pantone color book and formula that you have already found online. Place the container on the scale and be sure to tear, meaning to zero out the weight of the scale, that it includes the weight of the container that you're using. The formula calls for the first color to be the 7500 color concentrate mixing base. So this is the base that you're going to use uh, to mix the pigments into, the color concentrate pigments. They're curable and fusible again. Once you've added the base, you wipe off the spatula and then you want to wipe and smear the base around the edges and the sides of the container. This will make it easier to mix and disperse all the pigments that you're going to add later. You're going to be able to mix it a little bit better you get a thorough mix. And then we're going to wipe off our spatula, make it clean for the next ingredient, and then we're going to tear out the scale to zero. Next, we're going to add one of the first color ingredients, and in this case it's going to be the 7585 fluorescent red. We're going to add 45.2 grams. Next, we're going to tear the scale out to zero. Next, we will add the second ingredient, which is the 75, 77 fluorescent yellow, and the amount will be 14.0 grams. And after we have done that, we will again clean our spatula between every color. And now we're going to tear the scale to zero. And then we will add the next color, which is the 75, 88 mixing white and we're going to add 5.2 grams. When the formula calls for a smaller amount, it becomes more and more important to add uh, and be accurate in your measurements because the 0.1 or 0.2 becomes more and more critical uh, to the amount, the proportion of the amount of ingredients you're adding. Okay, so now we're going to uh, do the uh, next color, which is the 7557 red and we're going to add 4.6 grams to this formula. And next, after cleaning our spatula again and tearing the scale out, we are going to add another color. And this, in this case, it will be the 7555 Scarlet at 4.5 grams. Now all these pigments that we're adding right now are color concentrates. They are curable and fusible pigments uh, and you do need to use a base. That's why we added the base first. They are curable on their own, but they are intended to be used with different bases. In this case, it's the 7500 color concentrate base. Now, after cleaning my spatula and making sure I have all the accurate weights, I am now going to mix. And we're going to mix thoroughly, and because I've coated the sides of the container, all the pigments get uh, mixed pretty, pretty good because 
uh, nothing stuck to the side of the containers. I've got it all floating or suspended in the base, so it's much easier to get all that pigment mixed in. Keep in mind that all our formulas are printed through a 160 mesh or equivalent on the fabric and is cured before we really assess the color to make sure it's accurate. In reds, for instance, we need to make sure that the color after curing has cooled down some because red pigments darken with heat. So make sure that when you test the formula for accuracy, you have already cured it through the mesh that you want and have let it cool down some. All right, now I'm gonna visually verify this against the Pantone book. However, always try to uh, print the color with the mesh that you're gonna be printing through on the garment that you're gonna be using to verify that it's right for you. Here, I'm just showing you an example. I know it's not cured and it's not printed, but it shows you how close that formula really is. And lighting really has a great deal amount uh, of, of uh, influence on what it looks like. So here you can see, pretty close. And I thank you for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed this and that this is useful for you. And uh, join back, join us again soon, and we'll have some more information to share with you. Good luck.